Welcome to Electron Line. In this video and the ones to come, we're going to describe electromagnetic radiation in a little bit more detail. We're also going to describe how the equations that describe electromagnetic radiation were calculated and how they came about. And we want to get a better sense of what electromagnetic radiation really is. And it takes more than one video to do that. So here's our start. Here we're going to talk about it. In the next so many videos, we're going to really get a full picture of what electromagnetic radiation really is. Well, first of all, where does it start? One way to look at it would be to say that we have a charged object. Let's say we have an object there that's positively charged. It could be a single proton. It could be an object that has excess positive charges on it. And you can see that it has an electric field emanating in all directions away from the positive charge. Now, what happens when we take the object and we begin to move it up and down? Well, it turns out when we move the object up, the electric field move up, moves up with it. Also, we have a potential difference where there's a higher potential there and a lower potential there, and of course, the electric field is really a measure of how fast the potential difference changes. So when we move the object up, we have a changing electric field pointing in that direction, and so what happens is the electric field that normally would point outward will now be lifted up, and we have kind of a wave motion when that happens. Now when we take the object and we move it down, the electric field moves down with it, and that disturbance in the electric field emanates through space, at the speed of light. So the velocity at which this disturbance moves outward, out towards an observer, for example, is equal to the speed of light. Now, as we continue to move this object up and down, you can see that the electric field oscillations keep going up and down like this, and a wave motion seems to start. It's almost like a wave motion of an ocean wave, or a wave motion of a string that's, that is pushed up and down or pulled up and down like that. Now, at the same time, what we also learned through Maxwell's equations is that whenever the electric flux changes, which is what's happening here, by moving the, the charge up and down, we cause the electric field disturbance to go up and down. Whenever we have a change in the electric field, which is exactly what's happening here, we also are going to have a change in the magnetic field. And that's always going to be perpendicular to the direction of the change of the electric field. So if we take our, our right hand and put our fingers in the direction of the changing electric field, then we curl our fingers and change the magnetic field and our thumb points in the direction of motion of the disturbance. So as the electric field oscillations go up and down like this, the magnetic field oscillations will go horizontally back and forth like this, and, as, and therefore the motion of the wave will go in that direction. So simply, electric field, magnetic field, thumb points in the direction of the motion and the motion will be at the speed of light. And so as we continue to move this charge object up and down, the disturbance will continue and it will continue to move outward at the speed of light. Now, the frequency of the oscillation of electric field is directly proportional to the frequency of the oscillation of the charge object. So if we move the object back and forth very quickly, the oscillation will have a higher frequency. If we move the object up and down slowly, the oscillations will have a, a lower frequency. The intensity, the amount of energy imparted, because that's what waves end up doing, waves end up transporting energy from the source to wherever it's going. So what we have to do in order to move this object up and down, we have to change the potential difference, we have to change the electric field that requires energy in moving that object up and down, and the energy that we put into moving the object up and down then gets transported by the wave. And so energy is continuously being emitted from the source to wherever the energy is going. So that's what waves do, including electromagnetic radiation. The intensity then is equal to the amount of energy per unit time that's imparted on a certain area. And the energy here can be described as one over mu sub naught. Mu sub naught is the permeability of free space. And that's indicated here by four pi times 10 to the minus seven Weber's per area per meter. And so we have then the product of the electric field strength times the magnetic field strength divided by mu sub naught gives us the intensity. Remember, the intensity is in terms of watts per square meter, so it imparts a certain amount of energy, a certain number of joules per second per unit area, one square meter. So those are the units of the intensive electromagnetic radiation. Another way in which we can look at electromagnetic radiation is that it's really made up of quantized objects called photons. And here I have a kind of a pictorial representation of what photons are. Photons are minuscule pieces of energy, very tiny, and as electromagnetic radiation is transported through space, so to speak, through the vacuum of space, then you can see that's the same as sending a bunch of these small photons ahead. 
So the amount of energy being transported by electromagnetic radiation is the same thing as thinking in terms of quantized concepts, that it's a, a, an accumulation of small little pieces of energy called photons being sent in the same direction, moving at the speed of light. And each photon carries a certain amount of energy. The energy is equal to h times f, where h is Planck's constant, which here is the number for Planck's constant, is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. So, however much energy is being imparted by the electromagnetic radiation can be also calculated as a certain number of these photons, of course there'll be an enormous quantity of them, each containing a certain amount of energy being sent through space. And the energy that each photon carries is directly proportional to the frequency of the oscillations of the electric field, which is the same as the oscillations of each of the photons. So when you think about it, when energy then imparts on a certain square meter of surface, for example sunlight, or electromagnetic radiation of any kind, could be microwaves, could be radio waves, could be ultraviolet rays. When it imparts in a certain unit area there, it imparts a certain amount of energy per unit time. We can calculate that in terms of a bunch of photons hitting that, or an oscillating electric field hitting that. And so that's what we mean by electromagnetic radiation. The source is some charged object that's oscillating or accelerating. It could simply be an acceleration of a of a charge that causes disturbance in the field, that disturbance moves through space, and that's what we know as electromagnetic radiation. So now you have a certain picture of that. In the next videos, we'll show you some other concepts that will hopefully help us understand what electromagnetic radiation really is. There's a start.